That's cool. So, very excited to be here. I'm Brian. I'm Jacob. I'm Noah. I'm Nikhil. And we're going to open up Home Run Cafe. We suggest using the baseball segment to enter the coffee market in Seoul. So, our proposal is to partner with the Doosan Bears, a Seoul-based Korean baseball organization, to open a new baseball partnership and a coffee shop which will sell unique products and experiences. So before we dive into our store, let's just look at the market in general. First off, as we all know, the Korean coffee market is extremely saturated. Over the last 30 years, volume, production, sales, any measurement you want to use for coffee, it's increasing. If you walk down any district in Seoul, you're going to pass five coffee shops within a 10 minute walk. And that's on a very, very isolated street. So with this popularity came themed coffee shops. They've become unbelievably popular in general and especially in social media. Here we show one with a uh, cup of coffee with a Lego theme. And the second one is an escape the room coffee shop. Both have seen extreme popularity within Seoul. And so we want to take this popularity and apply it to a sport that is huge in Korea and that is baseball. Over 60% of Koreans list baseball as their favorite sport and it's growing and it's becoming much more popular. So we want to take these two markets and combine them to make a superpower. From now on, I'm going to explain how to enter this market and the specific products and services of our coffee shop. To open the baseball themed coffee shop, we will make a license partnership with Dizan Bears first. The reason we choose Dizan Bears is Dizan has recorded the best performance for, uh, during the recent four years among the baseball teams and salts. To make an agreement from Dizan Bears, we will guarantee a certain amount of profits from licensing fee and also our coffee shop will provide the service for Fen and it will make the fan base more st stronger. The location will be a station, and this place will attract more people, and the transportation is really convenient. And also because many people already visit their coffee shop in Gangnam Station, so we can attract the customers. Next, we will provide them food characterized bears and baseball. We will also provide beer and evening for people who enjoy games into with the TV. We also provide special services for for them like giving extra discounts if Susan gets a certain score and holds an autograph event with famous player in our coffee shop. People also can enjoy activities. In here, fast pitch is the virtual baseball game we provide. And second, we provide TV, large screen to watch the sports together. So talking about the financials is a crucial part of any proposal. So just to begin with some historical data, uh, on average, the price of coffee in Seoul has varied uh, in the past. And you can expect to pay anywhere from 3,000 won to above 5,000 won um, in a given coffee shop. And since we are entering a more luxury market and making specialty drinks, we're roughly approximating that our average cup of coffee will sell for around 6,500 Korean won. And as mentioned, we'll also have other product offerings like cookies, beer, and one important element of our idea is we will have a, a game fee that you'll have to pay um, when you're going into the coffee shop on a game day. And this is also a great way of trying to counter the alcohol tax that we will encounter um, by serving beer. And on the right side of this slide, we have a profitability analysis. So based on the data that we've collected, um, Korean coffee shops have a bottom line profit margin on average of around 15%, and their gross margin is around 85%. So using those numbers and additional data we calculated from the profits of large chains like Starbucks, and also the profits of uh, more luxury and specialty themed coffee shops, we've kind of used a weighted uh, average to come up with a profit around 250 million Korean won on an annual So our proposal will differentiate itself in a number of ways. Most importantly, because of the unique nature of our proposal, we will not only be the first sports-themed coffee bar or coffee shop within Seoul and Korea, but also the first baseball uh, coffee shop within both those areas as well. Now, because the Doosan Bears have a very large and loyal fan base throughout Seoul and surrounding areas, we already have.
have a decent market to tap into, just off fans alone, as well as other people in the area. And the Korean baseball organization, as well as the Busan Bears, have strong brand recognition across Korea. So that means that we'll be able to draw in a large number of consumers who are already quite familiar with the, those organizations. And when our proposal is successful, one of our biggest opportunities is that we can expand to further teams in the future, not just the Busan Bears, but also teams like the Samsung Lions and the LG Twins. So this is not a proposal that's necessarily going to be limited by the team alone. So I really believe that using uh, the SWOT analysis framework is a great way to kind of analyze our proposal. So starting off with the weaknesses and threats, there are a couple of risks associated with our idea, and we are targeting a segmented portion of the Korean market, sports fans and baseball fans, which could lead to some lower market penetration and higher startup costs due to our unique menu. On top of that, it could be relatively easy for new competitors to uh, come into the market as it could take on similar sports teams, and we, of course, would have to compete with some of the large existing brands like, like Starbucks. But we really feel that some of the strengths and opportunities that this proposal has are what set it apart. So again, this is the only uh, sports-themed coffee shop in Korea, so we would be the first mover in the industry, and we would really be capitalizing on the demand that has been proven in the Korean market. And uh, one of the key takeaways is that there's so much opportunity within baseball uh, in, the, in the short term future. The 2020 Olympics are coming up and they're gonna be in Tokyo and baseball is being reintroduced after many years, which will sp uh, spur a lot of growth and popularity within baseball. And as Jacob mentioned earlier, there, there is the potential to expand to other teams once this uh, coffee shop related with the Doosan Bears performs successfully. So we think there's really four keys for Home Run Cafe to win the game. The first, is the Korean customers have already liked themed restaurants or themed cafes for coffee. This is not a completely new idea. It's very popular among social media and generally all Koreans, which means that this idea of extending it to sports will not be very forward and likely to be accepted. Secondly, it's extremely hard just to add to the general industry. There's already way too many coffee shops and they have a lot of variation in price and in quality, and so there's very little you could do if you just stay within the coffee market. And making a hybrid allows you to sidestep the competition and be able to come up with a unique value proposition that no one else has attached yet, because overall, it's very hard to get on and compete with the Starbucks of the world, but instead, when you can make your own market with two popular subsections, your union is still very large. Going on to that, the fact that baseball is used as a theme is, as we've shown, very successful. It is 62% of the Korean population say baseball is the most favorite sport. For Doosan very specifically, 43% of the attendance was women. So there's even a gender equality that people don't really appreciate within baseball compared to other sports, meaning we'll be able to attack more demographics. Lastly, and I think most importantly, is that we are the only ones doing this. We don't have any direct competition. That is very hard, pretty much impossible, if you think about it, within Seoul and Korea, because you can go on SKK or anywhere else in Seoul, and you're gonna have a lot of options. But making ourselves unique by adding this extra element of baseball and just sports in general is gonna make it so much easier for us to make money. I think we're gonna knock it out of the park. <laughs> We'll take questions now. Does that maybe mean that there's no market? Does that maybe mean that the two concepts are actually incompatible? I think it's because the fact that we may we appreciated that because we said it was a hybrid. If we went full coffee, no beer, culturally, Koreans and just many people in general are not going to associate the two.
but I think they're going to bridge the gap together. So you go there and you say, oh, I'd love to do some bears. Let's grab a beer. Oh, I found a place on uh, Google or whatever search engine to use. I found this place. They're licensed by do some bear. Let's go there. And like, oh, they also have coffee. Let's come back next week and grab coffee in a setting that I really enjoy. And vice versa for coffee people that see that there's beer at the game. So you're really connecting two different markets. So I think the fact that we have beer and coffee, it's really going to be uh, two bimodal. Like it's not going to be coffee and beer at the same time, usually, just based on customer preferences. But it's also very flexible. If our beer industry is doing a lot better than coffee, or vice versa, we'll be able to adjust it based on time, game day, and adjust our menu and prices accordingly. And just to add a little bit onto that, so during non-game days, we're really trying to emphasize the experience that sports fan, sports fan would have coming to the coffee shop. So we'll have themed drinks that are named after some of the famous players, and we'll have opportunities to have meet and greets with the players and autograph sessions. So it's really more than just a place to hang out and watch the game. And it, it's really about the experience of going to a sports coffee shop. Why not do a sports restaurant? Because the coffee market is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're looking point is, thematically, it doesn't make sense to say coffee and sports. So that's one thing. If you, I haven't seen the financials. So one question I would ask is, if you're doing a theme restaurant, how much do you expect to pay in terms of licensing fee? And if you factor into licensing fee, is there enough business to cover that? So that's part of it. Number two, if based on your proposal of all the things you want to do, imagine the cost of the space. That is actually extremely high. Okay? Now, given that if all you do primarily is coffee, without any, even if you do dessert, that's still not going to be enough revenue turnover to sustain a space that sucks. Coffee shop works because it's small. Small coffee shop with high turnover is where the money is. Large space, low turnover, and people hanging around either looking at games or playing with memorabilia is sure a way to bankruptcy. How do you deal with that? So, uh, the first part of the question, sorry, sorry can you? Licensing fee. Yeah. Oh, licensing fee. So, historically, licensing fees we've seen have been anywhere from 2% to 7% of, uh, of your bottom line. So we can expect to find, you know, the most common licensing fees are around 5%. So that's definitely uh, a significant cost. But we think that's really crucial to have that partnership to be able Is to- Is it do. bottom line or top line? It's top line. Top line, top line, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess addressing the second part, yes, uh, opening the shop in Gangnam will, will definitely be expensive, but we're not trying to have like a very huge space. We want it to be maybe slightly larger than average, but some of the activities that we have inside are not going to take up that sp that much space. So the fast pitch is really just a booth with a net and uh, like a speedometer. So when you throw throw the base, it'll, t it'll tell you how fast it goes, but it's really not taking up that much square footage. But the location is really a critical part because we, we also considered having this coffee shop located next to the Doosan Bear Stadium. But the area has very low population, and there's not a lot of people that hang around there. So in its uh, location that we're proposing in Gangnam, we think we can attract a, a lot of customers. And I guess, <coughs> lastly, um, like you were saying, it's, it's very tough to make uh, a profit when you have you know, this expensive location, we're paying a licensing fee, uh, and things like that. But we are in the more premium market. We're going to be charging slightly higher prices for coffee. We're getting a fee when people come to watch games. And uh, based on a lot of the research that we've done, coffee shops in Korea have found uh, successful methods to, to be profitable on average. So we think by tweaking with all of our uh, current ideas, we will be able to be successful. What pricing strategy again? So you said you're going to charge premium coffee prices? Yeah, so, so right now we did like... But what was your beer price? The beer price, we're just assuming that it's lower than the coffee. So we're assuming that we'll have, just have like some cheap options for beer. Because the main focus is, is coffee. And we also want to drag... Even on game days? <laughs> we're trying to the point of the alcohol is to connect to markets that, as an initial view, are very isolated. And so the beer is going to be dragging sports fans into the coffee. So it's going to be your... Uh, your initial offering is going to be, or, oh, this place is really cheap beer, let's go here. And then they also have coffee, and that way when they come back, they're going to get coffee too. So it's going to be slightly, it's not as premium as your coffee, because that's not what we're going to specialize in.
but to be able to connect to market. I don't follow your customer journey yeah. there. So for they're going to drink and beer, and okay. then follow it with some coffee. So on a separate occasion. <laughs> because you need coffee before you drive, right? right. You <laughs> no, it's on a separate occasion. You're saying separate occasion. You drink, so, and then the next morning you go in because you definitely yeah. need coffee. Yeah. And then to further add, I would say that theme restaurants in general are much more expensive and not as efficient, but they've bought, they've been unbelievably successful in Seoul with the added create uh, with most of them being in very, very expensive areas like Gangnam. So I would say that if they're making money hand over fish with very large retail spots and with a unique theme, I think that adding baseball, which is even a larger product market, I think they would see similar profits. Yeah, so I haven't seen your detailed financials, so I don't know, but if I want to run such a huge operation in Gangnam with huge fixed and variable costs there, and make 200 million at the end of the day, it's not. The, the, the scale of the operation you're envisioning and the profit is not, you know, well, it's really massive. Yeah, it's yeah. not aligned. So if, if I'm running a really big operation, I'm going to go through all the effort of establishing all of that. I need to see a lot more change in my pocket at the end of the day as a business. I think right? part, yeah, part of the reason for that is we took a conservative approach to uh, some of the numbers that we used. So we waited, when we did the weighted average, we waited like the, the profits of some of the chain stores as, as a, a larger part of our waiting because we just wanted to be conservative and try to you know show that we have the potential to expand our profit margins. But if we were to look in more detail at some of the specialty coffee shops and how, how they're really making a lot of money, I think we could definitely push the scale and be making a lot more than the 250. In addition to the expansion opportunities within Seoul and to other cities, we'll be making more stores, meaning more money, in other cities and other parts of Seoul, as you have another 11 successful teams in the Korean baseball organization. So, you see this as one store per city, or is, it can't be 10 stores in the city, right? Because it's, well, Seoul it's has one three teams. Yeah. Well, three, three, three teams in Seoul. So, we're saying, like, so obviously the case here is you're opening up one shop. We're saying an op a great opportunity, the fact that in the nature of the KBL is you have 11 other teams. So, so, the max scale you can have is the number of teams. Within just this segment of baseball. You can then connect it, if you would like, into the Korean soccer organization. There's also the MLB and yes, UEFA in Europe. So there's a lot of sports interest, and we've been, at that point, you're getting into a massive organization with dozens of coffee shops, way out of the scope of just the initial. But the fact that there is so much room for expansion within the sports industry, because we're the first to get there, means that we have that room, while other segments of the coffee industry do not have that room. Thank you.